Okay, hello, 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 hello. Thank you for coming to the, it's often known as the graveyard shift um, after lunch. You, you can nod off if you like. Um, my name's James, James Kay. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about myself because I don't like to. Um, I'm co-founder of an agency called Big Ideas Machine. Um, essentially, we, we specialize in working with startups in the tech sector. We do a lot of B2B stuff on mobile, but also personally, I've done a, uh, quite a few years now in, uh, in app marketing. And, and to be truthful, about 90% of that is game centric. So I don't know how many of you are mobile game developers, but it, you know, tends to be now most people are Steam and mobile or one or the other. So in 30 minutes, I'm going to give you my whistle stop. 10 commandments of app marketing. And these are kind of the 10 current things at the moment or things that, over, that I've gleaned over the last few years. Um, so anyway, without further ado, let's start. I'm not going to talk about us. I'm not going to talk about me. If you want to tweet anything, we're at Big Ideas Machine, not, not shockingly enough. So I don't want to press anyone, but you've got to contextualize the market for everybody when you're talking talking about apps because unfortunately I do work with a lot of developers who think it's all going to be really good and easy and stuff and you know latest data is you, you almost parity with the two app stores now and that, I've just talked about Google Play I'm not even talking about Amazon and Windows and stuff so there's 1.4 million apps on on the app store 1.5 million on Google Play 75 billion app downloads so far la 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 just to set the scene this is really interesting, actually. We did a survey with a client a couple of years ago. Nobody ever asks app developers what they're actually doing about their marketing. So we're going to do it again this year. I will do it at the end of this year. But it was fascinating. We polled a 1,000 app developers and just asked them like, a few questions, attitudes to app marketing, what are you doing? And shockingly, you can see there of 1,000, over 78% have allocated $5,000 for from, for everything. So bear in mind as well, some people have got aspirations to do user acquisition. This is the whole pot. This is the whole shebang. This was two years ago. But I'm still amazed by anybody who doesn't have a realistic view of perhaps what they do need to set aside to market that app. Although I also argue quite fairly hopefully if you've got the will and the patience you can do a huge amount of it yourself and i'm not going to build some amazing mystique that agencies are the gate holders to all great things great and magical and stuff you can do it yourself i always say that if you've got the right the right tools and then just you know only nine percent of small developers would use a specialist pr agency versus 18 percent of medium large ones just one of my favorite fr favorite phrases which i think is always apt for App marketing from Rudolf Giuliani, the ex mayor of New York. Hope is not a strategy, and unfortunately, I meet uh, <laughs> too many developers who exist in this wonderful world known as hope. I hope to put it on the App Store. I hope to put one press release to one person. I hope it's going to do well, and that doesn't doesn't really ca cut it. And I had loads of other slides here which I took out because you'd probably want to slit your wrists. But I've got loads of other data. Um, to tell you how brutal it is, how few developers actually make any money, that 90-something percent of that developers are making 90-something percent of the revenues, because I usually do that, but I've had to condense it down today, and I wanted you to feel a bit happier than wanting you to top yourselves. But, but really, you know, I, always, I say the same thing to app developers. The odds are against you. You know, I never pretend it's rosy and lovely and nice out there. App marketing, for me, is still very much an afterthought, and app marketing is this amorphous cloud of user acquisition, PR, social media, all these other bits in between. I think the barriers to entry are always going up, um, certainly the case. Cust consumers are fickle. We'll go over that a bit in a minute. I'll just talk about the fickle, especially with the free-to-play now. I mean, you're, you're even in a market now where you're having a nightmare to so say people to install something for free. That's a bit of, you know, that's the situation we predominantly find ourselves in. Um, Large, large companies and brands need internal facilitators. It doesn't really apply to you guys. There are a lot of large brands out there who have their own apps. They are, unfortunately, a lot of them clueless about using all their internal mechanisms and channels to actually promote that. And I, I know this because I was, I was acting head of mobile at the Daily Mirror for, for about a year. So I know from my own experience of how companies are not always set up themselves to market their apps. Um, Obviously, there's a huge amount of apps appearing all the time. This is this is the last one. Unfortunately, I'm going to put it up front here. There is no magic bullet for success. Had a meeting with someone last week. He's an old friend. And at the end of the meeting, he went, there's no magic bullet, is there? And I'm like, funny you should say that, because that's always what I put in my presentation. So, no, it's just a lot of slog and hard work. The other thing as well, 
um, that, that's definitely come to the fore in recent recent months is this whole thing of developers uh, uh, maturing or growing or having to wear multiple hats. So I did write an article about this buried away somewhere in Pocket Gamer a year or a year and a half ago. Um, but but basically, it's a rich. You start off with the best one in the world. I'm gonna, I'm passionate about games. I'm passionate game designer. I'm a coder. I'm going to develop it. Yeah. And then all happens is suddenly you're like, oh shit! I've got flow analytics, and I've got all these. I've got big data, as everyone calls them now, flowing into. I don't know what to do with it. I need a data analyst because if I do user acquisition, then I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with that data. And then you need someone to do your PR and marketing, which is kind of what I do, I suppose. You know, to deal with the lovely people at the media and to social media and all the other bits and pieces product manager someone's actually got to sit there continuously saying you know oh i'm looking at my funnels and i'm looking at my flows you know what what the features people are asking for how am i getting feedback on things and so that's the other thing is product manager role community manager speaks for itself most of the games now are games as services everyone calls it there's a massive amount of people there who talk about it twitch forums reddit you need to be engaging with them all the time and then advertising guru, user acquisition, it's nasty, it's horrible, it's painful, it's scary. I certainly wouldn't go near it particularly. And and so somebody needs to do that as well. So these are kind of the, the hats that I perceive a lot of people having to wear with the, in the kind of their marketing and the operations. So without further ado, I'm going to go on to the uh, 10 commandments of app marketing. Number one, the number one thing, and it seems really obvious, quality. It never ceases to amaze me how much rubbish I get given. You know, I, I say this with no position of arrogance or smugness or, or anything like that. I turn down far, far, far more things than I take on. And that's because I know that I cannot possibly go to Apple. I cannot possibly put something in front of a journalist unless it is something that is of quality. And if it's, I'm not bigging up having an agency, but the more, if you use agencies, I think one of the benefits a, or a qualified person that works with you, because they may be a freelancer can bring, is helping you with that reality check. You know, we, we, we person, I personally spend actually quite a few months with some clients of their games giving quite detailed feedback before I ever put a press release out or speak to a journalist. We'll give, get a build, write loads and loads of bullet points, give a lot of feedback, and that's other things that people may help you with. But quality, quality, and also if you see, this is a quite old now from Flurry, this is 2012, but I've always thought it's useful. This is generally your user retention. It's the amount of people you're probably going to have after one month and after two months or three months, basically. And then generally I find as well, benchmarking is quite hard. People don't often give their apps to other people. You're too close to it to see the wood for the trees. It happens a lot. I see it all the time. So that's why it's good to engage other people because the other thing as well is people say to me, oh, I'll use the App Store for testing. I'm like, no, don't use the App Store for testing. It might help you with your monetization if you put it in Canada or Ireland or South Africa or any of these other English-speaking territories people launch in. But so do not expect meaningful feedback from anybody on the App Store. If you're lucky, three people are going to say it's shit, it crashed. And that's <laughs> that, and that doesn't tell you anything. Doesn't tell you about it. OS just doesn't. Or oh, it's rubbish. You're not going to do it. Doesn't doesn't help you. So you know that's a challenge. I don't have an answer to it apart from going perhaps onto forums like Touch Arcade or other places and actually offering people to say, look, I'm you know, would you be interested in helping me beta test? We'd love some feedback or getting a closed beta going. But you know that that is one way of doing it. Standing out secure reviews. Customers can smell a rat. If your app is rubbish, if you pay to shoot your app to the top of the chart, you're just going to shoot yourself in the foot because you end up getting a lot of ones. I've seen it as well, loads. People spend tens of thousands of pounds on UA, they get one and two star reviews, and it and it dies again. Goes straight back down. That's like, you know, it happens. And then also the app stores love quality and polish. You know, sitting with Apple, as I have done, as any, any of you have dealt with Apple, you know, the, Apple is about quality. They're about polish. Android uh, Google are, but they've got slightly different motivations I'll talk about in a minute. But but Apple is all about, you know, being on with their aesthetic, m m things that showcase the power of their device and the, qu the Apple quality that comes with it as well is very important. Two, have a strategy. You know, I just stuck questions up here. I get loads of people coming to me. I ask these kind of questions I ask them not anyone's fault but people don't ask themselves or have not been asked the right questions you know what's the app for what formats are going to be on what does it do should i self-publish a lot of people i know debating over whether to self-publish or go with the publisher it's an eternal debate i speak to a lot of people about 
what's my ARPU, my, you know, it. A lot of people I know operate in a total vacuum. I'll sit down and I'll say, right, who are your competitors? What are your USP versus your competitors? Because if people don't have big budgets as well, I can't spend my time doing that for them. So I had a developer came to me with a dating app last week, as an example, and I said to him, Tinder, Grinder, all these other apps, where do you sit? A matrix and you kind of put people into quadrants and he, and he and he all hadn't done that and he actually went away and he, he came back a week later to his credit and he plotted it out i mean that was for dating apps it wasn't for games but he'd really considered where he thought he wasn't giving us the and the problem i have a lot of games is it's not that hard to gaming utterly totally unique or quite small if you're building upon a proven formula or in a particular genre no your, not your enemy, but know your competition because any journalist who receives your game benchmarks almost immediately. I know I'm not a journalist, but I know that's what I, I would be doing is I would be looking at some bullet points and this sounds like this or that's different to this. So that's what a journalist does. They've got an encyclopedic knowledge of the industry or, or games within your major genre leaders, or as you may well do too as a developer, and they will be benchmarking you against other people so it's your job to know why you're better than others and that's why you know you get the old clash of clans cl clone thing going on this i call this app store funnel so it's really important to understand as well and and it's broadly the same for both of the app stores you're funneling people down okay and at the top is the discovery and at the bottom is to actually download your app and open it and in between that it's an amorphous term a lot of people called ASO app store optimization which I'll talk about in a minute and it means different things to different people to me app store optimization is simply that's your retail space you have the power to make your shop front Selfridges or Aldi so you you can do that and so most people opt for Aldi, unfortunately, or Lidl, which might be some pallets with some brown boxes on them. There's a lot of great, nice things you can do from making really snappy app store copy through to the vi using video, quality of screenshots, p icon, the name, everything. I'll talk about it in a minute. But basically, you, I don't know if you can see it here, and obviously we'll share the presentation afterwards, but you're feeding people down through. So how they discover it, reading a review. Once again, that's why the media is important, because you put your good reviews at the top. Okay, or someone might come to you because they found you on the charts, or they'll read a review. They'll read a review. They look, search is a massive driver, so people just happen to see it. There's a tiny space, one or two sentences people will give you, plus the icon, and then you're taking them down through this funnel. So just going on from that about first impressions, this kind of ties into the last one: is optimizing your presence on the app store. So this is what I was saying before about customers being very fickle. They make very, very snap decisions. What's the name? If people have the most airy-fairy, esoteric, weird, disconnected name possible, you're stuck at the moment between being building a really good brand and doing what, doing what it says on the tin, for want of a better phrase, which is if I've got a cupcake baking app or something like that, do you not just you have the word cupcake in the title rather than something very random that won't tell anyone anything? This is less so for games less over games than it is for other fitness or baking or whatever, whatever app, other apps they are just just also you know keeping up to date with the ability of what the different app store owners can give you is really important so just an example i'm shocked by how many game pages i go on to on both stores and there's no video video for me is possibly one of the number one drivers for making people download apps because it, and even I would say this as well, journalists deciding whether they actually can be bothered to review your apps if you don't know that already. Because it saves anyone any hassle. In 30 seconds, I can quickly see, is this worth my time and effort? And people will make a decision. So that 30 seconds on Apple or Google, shame on you. Shame on you if you are not using free space in which to do it. And then also icon. I mean, once again, each of these things we could spend hours talking about, which I'm not going to bore you with. Icons alone, if you go on to best app icons, app icon, if you go to pixelresort.com, it's a really good website. He's an amazing app store uh, icon designer. He's actually got um, 
this uh, this thing called uh, App Icon Template. I don't know if anyone's used it before. If you go to appiconTemplate.com, gives you all the different size variables for your app icon on all that you, that are going to sit, and you can see, oh, this doesn't work at this teeny tiny size, and this is a bit bigger. And actually, will tell you. So there's a lot of stuff you can do for yourself once again to kind of understand why icons, and obviously as well with icons, the design trends, obviously with the flat design that came in with iOS 7, that was very popular and stuff. So it's good. There's also a lot of psychology, psychological things to do with the color of the background. You can find articles on if you choose to choose to do so. But the icon alone is is extremely important. And the name as well. You know, I spelling out the name. Keyword in the name, there's a, there's quite a lot of debate in the moment about chasing keywords, but it's inescapable that if you're if a keyword, the key, the name does rank. So I wouldn't contrive to put something irrelevant or stupid in it. I wouldn't call it Angry Birds Fruit Ninja this, but you, you, the, the name does bear thinking about in a lot of cases when it comes to it comes to ASO and, and ranking. And then just a couple of couple of quotes here. This one on the left here from Barbara Holbrook, who App Crave is quite old now, but I think it still stands. Is it says it's unfortunate, but I don't have time to download and test every app that comes out. A video takes just seconds to watch and could be the difference in whether an app gets a longer look. So that's just underscoring that video argument again. And then Interbrand here said, the bottom line is imperfect app names force shoppers to work harder. And that will mean fewer downloads. For all the time you put into developing an app, isn't the name worth the added effort? Five. Halfway. Understand the app store owner's understand their motivations. If it, once again, I would, ple I would say anyone here, if you're going to develop a mobile, do build up a relationship with Apple. They're not scary. They're not evil. The worldwide, the developer team there will give feedback. The people at Apple are actually very open. And, and I say this to all clients. I, would, I'm, I don't shield them. I, don't, I make an introduction to Apple. I help them. But I will always put them onto Apple because if as a developer, it's in your interest to have a long-term relationship with Apple. Google, it's slightly harder sometimes to get that relationship going but also just to understand what they're looking for. And whilst it may seem obvious, you know, Apple is all about the hardware. Apple sells hardware. Yeah, they want things. Apple has said to me when I sit in front of them, you know, they say we want th they want things that are going to help showcase the power of their devices. And the other thing as well for Apple is they'll never, ever, ever tell you what's coming out. They just won't, unless you get a preview build of the latest version of, you know, iOS 9 or whatever. So, for example, when there was a rumor that Retina was about to hit the displays, they told us that the, the, the uh, Real Racing guys kind of said to them, we think that the Retina's coming out. We're going to take a punt and we're going to develop our game to a higher resolution. And then the team there didn't really say, yes, to go and do that. But they went the week that Retina displays launched, they then used those apps to showcase the power of the product. So all I'm saying there is if you're catching a whiff of features or things that are going to be in like the, the force touch that is rumored to be coming with all the new iPhones or iPads, for example, if you, is it force touch? Sounds a bit Star Wars-y, but whatever it's called, if it was on the, the latest MacBook, if, if you feel that's coming along or the API is made available, if you go to Apple and say, I've made a game and it uses the nuances of this new technology that will make them pick up their ears more. I had a client had a game, a very big game called Real Boxing, really lovely, developed using the Unreal Engine. It was it was a gimmick, but our client used the camera to basically make it like connect. And and they flip Apple just went mad for it, yeah. Like you stood there and you punch and it kind of it kind of largely worked. But it doesn't matter is that they made it using the device's camera. So it was just something slightly nuanced and different that, that Apple liked. Um Google. Google's more about, as we know, Google's all about search, yeah? So I'm not saying... For, uh, so one other thing as well. Apple are kingmakers. Apple will take your app with no one else in the world having seen it, but they like it. They will take a punt on you. The problem for you might be they feature it and you get two-star reviews and you've been torpedoed. Generally, what I found with Google is they like to be a bit more measured and say, you know what? Keep it, keep it going for a bit. Tweak it. Test it. I think they're kind of happy to, for you to use them as, as almost a beta testing platform. I'm not going out too much of a limb there. Or they, they're less bothered about it. And then they will feature you when your mean review score average is in the 4, 4.5s is, is, is higher, basically. So I'm just saying there's slightly different, I perceive different motivations. And as well, 
Google just, I don't know how many of you know, Google just in, in, introduced deep linking with their app indexing. I don't know how, how many of you are aware of it, and a lot of people aren't. It's potentially amazing for anyone to do less so for games, because I haven't quite worked out with games about indexing the content. But this means that you can let an, Apple, Google, and they released, actually, they're doing it yesterday for iOS, they announced, but I don't know how different it is. Google will index your app now and will show your app on a carousel in search results with a download install link. You install it and it will go straight to that piece of content. So that's potentially very powerful for app marketing and app discovery for app developers that not a lot of people are necessarily aware of. Amazon, you know, other in the wings as well, you've got Amazon, you know, making quite aggressive moves. Into into game. Amazon owns Twitch. So my game man. So Google owns Twitch or Amazon. I made a terrible clangor there. It's Google, isn't it? Was it Amazon that bought Twitch? It's Amazon. It's Amazon. So I'm not going mad. Okay, thank you. So you know you can see Amazon are making a play for games, although they don't seem to be as visible at, at, at conferences and stuff. But obviously with Crytek Engine, Double Helix, just looking at the set top boxes, you, they are making overtures and heavy moves into games, just like Facebook with Oculus, I suppose. It's just a question of trying to kind of work out what, what they're doing. But Amazon App Store still isn't up there, obviously, with Google and and, um, and Apple, but it's, it's one to keep an eye on. And also, you know, Samsung. Samsung embeds, does a lot of embedding still and featuring, and they put their App Store on millions of devices. And Microsoft, I, I've got clients storming the barn on with their apps on Microsoft because there isn't a huge amount of competition. So they've got a very, you know, decent apps and they're making a lot of they're making a lot of money. ASO, I'm gonna I'm not gonna spend ages on ASO. Just quickly app store optimization. You probably can't read that, but that's the percentage of how people discover apps. Yeah, the top end is 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 the charts, word of mouth, and um, app was featured um, and then they they saw someone play, weirdly enough, and it's like staring at someone over the shoulder on a train or something, or just a friend. But this is generally how people discover apps. Reviews in the media are valuable for that, but I think the hidden value, and the journalists amongst us may argue differently, but I'm told this by many people, that, that a lot of the things for the reviewers is that the App Store people will read the reviews. They will look for for the buzz. They will look to the reviews as well for validation or just a, or previews to kind of pick up on stuff. Although, obviously, reviews will drive downloads, but never I've never seen them day and date create some kind of spike, even if you have, like, eight positive re reviews coming out. It's unusual. Um, and then just also just about about Google's, if people don't know that, is it's actually based on net installs. So if you drive a thousand, thousand uninstall, you're not going to rank. Apple isn't about net installs. Google is, is, is works on net installs. So it's kind of better in that sense of true interest in, in an app. Okay, so this is kind of nub of going on to on for t um, earlier. But um, no one asks journalists what they want. No one's bothered to say to a games journalist, what, what are you looking for? And it was sort of driving me a bit nuts because I obviously deal with games journalists and I deal far more with or as much with app developers. And I said the same thing. So we, we thought earlier this year, let's survey game reviewers. So this is outside on the table. It's not a shameless plug. It's free. It's there for your delectation. We did the first ever survey of app reviewers. We had 69 app reviewers that took part in it and uh, and just a few of the a few of the uh, a few of the, the sort of insights here I said rate the following factors importance regarding influence help you decide whether to consider an app for review and you can see here relevance the thing that came out to me time and time again was actually not just screenshots and video but relevance the amount of journalists getting spammed with to generic me to irrelevant emails if you're gonna target journalists know what they're writing about know their readership and their audience and write something to them not just a mass mail spam out because it'll never work given the media the top three reasons why they reject an app biggest one as well is not appropriate for their audience once again same thing coming up here and then the other thing is pitch emails missing app features lack of screenshots there's some basics you can read this at your mer at your mercy at your leisure <laughs> And then also, what percentage of all pitches you receive progress onto final review? Roughly the majority, less than 10%. So that's, that's the success, the hit rate most people are getting when they send the apps off for review. 
I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to gloss over this quickly. This is about user acquisition. It's nasty. It's hard. It's difficult. I'm not going to talk about UA now because I'm running out of time in the last two points. This, this is actually the thing I think is mo most relevant. It, with mobile games marketing, it's been quite a cookie-cutter approach till now in terms of work on the game, reach out to people, get it reviewed. You can't do much creative. It's hard to do sort of creative or interesting stuff. What's happening now, I think, is obviously because developers have got sitting on top of a mountain of content, developers don't realize that they can make their own campaigns for, for only their time, not money. So I'm talking about making loads of videos about behind the scenes artwork, the making of, strategy. You know, video is also becoming, for me, I think, sort of the number one driver as well, especially with YouTube being the second biggest search engine in the world. Um, Reddit is obviously very, is, is, is very big. Um, I think as well, something that we're trying to do is create little quirky bits of content that may help the app stand out or may get noticed. So what I'll do is, not because I'm going to big, big ourselves up, but I just want to show you a couple of things that we've done, is that you can go onto Fiverr, if you're familiar with Fiverr or People Per Hour, and you can get things made for relatively relatively little money. So what we did was, we had two, we've had two apps we've done this for now. One is called Gang Nations, which is a Clash of Clans style, East Coast, old style kind of LA game. So what I was, I found a rapper on the West, uh, West Coast in the US, and in under 24 hours, I got him to pro professionally produce a track for the game, which we use for the other, and you know, you can send it to journalists, but... So that's the first one. And then the other one is an app we're launching this week. So I've got a client with a game, indie developer, one man band. It's a game called Epic Eric. It's a platform puzzler with, with a knight that can save a princess but the, the twist that everyone really liked when we sent it a review is that you can have the princess you can play as a princess and you can save the knight so i've got them you can go and look at it it's up now called i've got them to make a site because it's coming out on android next week and it's being updated for ios this week and i've gotten to create a site called save the night.com and we've had a, a a song like a charity single made for people to raise awareness of the plight of the night so once again i got this done through through fiverr but Anyway, that's uh, so that was that. It was just a bit. It's a bit of fun. We're not trying to come up with some amazing chart-topping, barnstorming success here. I'm just saying f that you can create little hooks or little things around an app, relatively inexpensively, that might get it noticed or get other people to do it, and then we put it on SoundCloud. So, oh, I don't want that. Sorry, just move on to the final slide because I'm at the end of the presentation now. Okay. I'm not going to go into this too much. 
because I think a lot of people know this, but there's a huge amount of data out there. Understanding, you know, just I've, putting analytics in your app is really important, acting on it. The important thing as well, recently, Google's about to allow A-B testing on the App Store, which they've announced. And also, at iOS App Analytics, Analytics Beta launched properly last week. So for the first time, you can actually see how many people are landing on your page, which is massive for conversion being done. So in summary, I think for me, for us, definitely it boils down to quality. Customers know, customers do no good from bad. As I said, the bar is always rising of what you have to do to get in. For us, I'm learning all the time. You know, I said the only benefit, the benefit, one benefit agency is because that's what we do a lot of the time. So <laughs> knowing about app evolving and it evol it's an ever evolving art. First impressions most definitely count. Uh, next one isn't so important to people in the room here about brands having existing channels. Have a multi-channel strategy, social media, video, web, mo lots of places you can do stuff is what I'm, what I'm saying and to be creative. Be in it for the long haul. Don't just rely on the launch and walk away. This is games as a service for a lot of people. It's like, what's actually going to happen post-launch? What am I doing to keep interest high? It's a bit self-serving here, but it, you can work with experts. And once again, it doesn't have to be big agencies. It can be loan loan practitioners, consultants, a lot of good people out there. Um, and, and unfortunately, to end on a slightly down note, there is no single bullet, magic bullet or solution for success. But that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, sir. No, I mean, I'd love to. I mean, there's lots of little niche side businesses that if I had the time and money to do testing, I'd probably go and set them up tomorrow if I had the ability to do it. But I think there's a huge amount of, there's a huge amount of stuff out there like a B, like even beta testing your app or testing the effect and effectiveness of an icon that's still very subjective and could do with testing services potentially. Maybe, maybe you'll see me here in five years' time talking about my amazing multi-million pound testing business that I've set up. Sorry if that's not incredibly useful. Yeah, he's Pixel Roy, he's very good. He knows his stuff. No. Anyway, like I said, this is on the table outside, so there's a, there's a few of them. Oh, go on. Yes, yes. If you talk about, well, we're all chasing the Holy Grail and getting a picture on either Apple. Yeah. It's an extremely good question. From from my limited knowledge, Apple, I don't think they ask for exclusivity overtly. I've never had anyone sit in front of me asking for it, but I think there's a tacit, sometimes a tacit belief or understanding that you need to kind of be on Apple for a bit first on exclusive period. Not so much for some people, and I think that's mostly like the really big, 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 big titles. If you're going to just get featured in the carousel, which is a great achievement in and of itself, I don't think it really matters. If it's like you're going to be editor's choice, which is very unusual now, especially because they do buckets of games rather than individual ones, it might be that the Apple would like you to be exclusive for a bit, but it's not a formalized thing as far as I can see. No, I don't know anyone that would launch on, on. I mean, not many people go that way. It tends to be a one-way door or street in that regard. <laughs>